All right, so I've opened up Illustrator where I'm doing my little self-portrait playground with vectors. And I've gone over a few tools. I use the pen tool here. And here we have strokes turned on. Here we have fills turned on. Um, I used the blob brush tool here, some with fills turned on, some with strokes turned on. And here I use the shape tools with just solid fills to create cutouts of black shapes in Illustrator that are all vectors. So I want to show you another way, which is if you take your raster image, whatever it is, I'm going to quickly take a raster image of my sketch. And this is more, more than not, in case unless I'm doing something that's just really, really clean and corporate. This is usually in more cases than not, the way I approach the uh, logos I design. So I just did a, a quick little selection of my sketch. I'm going to open that up in Photoshop. Because I copied it, it should be on the clipboard for the new document. This is Photoshop. This is a raster program. And it's not very big. I'm going to paste it in. All right, so there's my sketch. The problem is I want to clean it up a little bit before I bring it into Illustrator. And so the same thing would be true of you if you do like a little screen grab of yours. You're going to want to clean it up. So what I'll do is first select the inverse. So I have this, then I'm going to use image adjustments, all those tools we used in compositing for controlling and cleaning images, very useful here. Want to get rid of a lot of the, the debris, right? And I could even go in, make a duplicate and erase by filling with white. And I could even use my paint bucket, though we haven't done much of this yet, and this isn't going to be as effective as you would want it to be. Use my defaults and just fill shapes with black. But you'll see they'll be a little shaky because of all the sketch lines. Right? But what I like best about this as a tool in Photoshop and a way that we can bring it in is now I can mess with its proportions. I can mess with its space, right? So I made a duplicate and I'm going to transform it. So select all, command A, command T, transform. And let's shrink it a little bit this way. That's a little too much. Maybe there, let's warp it a little. Top, kind of push this down. And basically, you want to get more out of your sketch if you can. And I'm noticing from some of the reference So basically, you can't be too precious with what you've created if you're really going for the best thing. With some of the reference and the things I'm inspired by, like these swimming logos, there's a little bit of water underneath the swimmer, right, to suggest it. So I kind of like that line there. And that's actually coming from a layer underneath. I didn't have that in my sketch. That's coming from these layers underneath. So let's make a layer underneath, and let's get rid of the things we don't want. Call that and fill that with white. So I encourage you to kind of mess with it. I squint a lot. I'm looking at proportions. And then if I, I think this is a, a solution that might have some merit, it needs to be cleaned up. Some of the curves got less elegant. But I'm going to show you how you do that in Illustrator. Then I might hold down Option and say Layer Merge Visible. This is why I call it a mashup logo project. Right. 
And then I can actually decide, okay, which one do I like better, this one or this one? And this one seems a little bit more focused, maybe a little, has a little bit more energy. So let's say this is the one I want to work with. Okay, so now what am I going to do? I'm going to make it even darker. I'm going to really try to make this black shapes on white. So let's make a duplicate of it and then go to levels and really push the midtones darker. So you really get a sense of them being solid black shapes. You can also try limiting the highlights. But the problem is you want bright white out there. Now that's going to give me little bits of debris, but that's okay. I don't want it to go all the way because I don't want it to get chunky at the edge. But I also don't want that middle section to really be a factor. So about there. Okay, it's okay that I still it's still like a color scan or a color photo. Okay, now I'm going to save that. And I'm just going to save it as I call them a test. So Carl uh, Angry Water Test. And I'm going to save it as either a JPEG or a PNG. In fact, just to show you to the desktop. Um, that raster is so different than vector, it doesn't matter if it's a JPEG or a PNG. But if I wanted to make it a PNG, what would I do? I would select all the white, delete it, turn off the background layer, so it's a free floating, right? That's how you would make a logo in Photoshop. The problem is if you make a logo in Photoshop, it has to be re-rasterized for every size you want it to be. Otherwise, it would just always be the wrong resolution. So if I save this now as a PNG to the desktop, let's save my title here as Carl's Angry Water Test PNG. They're going to come into Illustrator the same way. So this is what I mean. Now I can close this, don't need it anymore. If I want to save it, I want to save it as a Photoshop file. So I can go back and see how I messed with my sketch. And have all those layers. All right, so what did I do? Didn't do much. I came in, I brought my sketch in, I cleaned it up a little bit, I filled it in with black, I started uh, stretching it and notice something I liked, and then double down on it. Right? And now I'm going to bring that into Illustrator. Now you could try to just draw that, like be able to picture exactly what you want and draw it in Illustrator, but it's not that likely. So usually when you work in Illustrator, you work with a sketch with some reference behind. Notice I didn't do that here, and my self-portraits look all very different. Right? They're not based on a photo or anything. So I'm going to open a new Illustrator file. Actually, not even do that. I'm going to just open from the desktop. And I can do this two ways. I can be an Illustrator and say open, which is taking a little bit longer than it should. Or I can go here and right click and say open with Illustrator. Right. So I want to go to the desktop and I want, let's do my um, my JPEG. The reason it, it's not showing the PNG is because it lost its tag and so it's not sure what file type that is within Illustrator. So I just need to put that back in. Whereas Photoshop can read them without the tag, Illustrator can't. Okay, so it brought in my sketch, but it's a raster file still. It's still very much pixel based. But immediately if I click on it, it's going to give me what are called live trace options at the top. Image trace. And if I scroll down and I say, okay, I want a black and white logo, it's going to show me a preview. And this is how you get these advanced options by clicking here. 
of how it would trace it as a vector. It hasn't traced it as a vector yet, but it's showing me how it would. Now I have some control here. I can tell it how much to ignore, right? So if I make my threshold pretty low, it should mostly only see the black shapes and not all the debris, right? I might even like some of that kind of debris in there. I like it in the wave. I don't like it so much in the person. So how about about there? Then I can play with how many paths do I want it to make, and I want it, I want it clean and sophisticated. So lower paths, not so many corners, right? So how many corners do I want? Well, it depends how sharp I want my shapes to be. And so for this, I don't want that many corners at all. And then noise would be like the little things and say, don't allow for much noise. That allows for a ton of noise, things that are one pixel and smaller. This says, don't allow for anything that's smaller than a hundred pixels. So if I want a little bit of that debris, I have to allow for some noise. But no, let's try to, I can always add in debris. Okay, so if I like those settings, those are pretty extreme settings. But I think it works for mine. This is going to give me like a rough cutout. To me, it's, it's honestly, it's like hiring a little kid to cut out your, your sketch, right? You know you're not going to get exactly what you wanted, but it, it's better than nothing. It gives you a place to start. So then in order to trace it, you click on Expand. And what that will do is it will turn it into a vector. The problem is right now, because I hit black and white logo, it will trace not only my black shapes, but also my white shapes behind. So if I don't want it to trace the white shapes, this is true even if it were a PNG, I have to say ignore the white in the advanced options. Once I hit that and I hit expand, now I have a vector. Vector with anchors. So this I can clean up, right? Now this is my favorite way to work. Instead of having to draw this with the blob brush, I now just get to edit it. And I like to use what I call magic scissors. So if this is a cutout of paper. Now I'm going to use my magic scissors, which are the pencil tool. <laughs> Very different than the pencil tool in Photoshop. If I hold down Option, I'll get the last selection tool I use. I like to use the small selection tool so I can see the anchors. And then this is why they're magic scissors. They can cut and reshape just like regular scissors, but they can also add to and reshape. So magic scissors. And if I want to smooth it out, and if I want this curve to maybe go up and over instead of flirt with horizontal so much, I can do that. And notice how it smoothed it out. It lessened my number of anchors. That's because if you double click on the pencil tool, you set how smooth versus how accurate you want it. And right now I want really smooth because I'm dealing with these curves. Same thing here, hold down command so I can see the anchors. Now you have to start going through an anchor and you have to end through an anchor. For the pencil tool, see I didn't quite make it. Um, otherwise it will just create a new path. So it takes some practice. But, and you can do it in small steps first, like that. Ah, thought I did it. And that is one of the complaints about Illustrator. It's in really persnickety, really particular. But it will smooth your drawing in a way that um, keeps you from ever having to give up coffee. I used to do a lot of comic books and kind of inking of comic my comic book work. And it would just kill me to have to do just smooth, elegant lines. And then I realized that I could vectorize them and smooth, smooth the line work this way. And it's just better in every way. Now there's also what's called the smooth, something called the smooth tool. So you see how it's a little bumpy there? Underneath the pencil, you can use the smooth tool 